So today, we're gonna make a really condensed short video all about how to purchase film. Here we go. So today's discussion is all about film. And we're gonna talk very, very fast and very condensed about buying film and where to get film from and why it's important to get newer film versus older film. So Kodak has a date on film, which is that six months within manufacture date is their cutoff. Everything that's over six months old is throwaway. It's non-conforming. Uh, Kodak generally disposes of it. If it's sitting around, they can get the silver back out of it. Um, they'll also give it away sometimes to smaller projects if necessary. But generally speaking, six months is that window. Um, the reason why is because film goes bad um, at a very, very fast rate past six months. So within that six month window, they can guarantee the film is pretty gonna be good, you know? And then what happens is that as the film ages, it starts to generate a fog layer. And what a fog layer is, is basically, it is a layer on the surface of the film that is not as clear, okay? It becomes less clear, which means that when you wanna expose the individual layers of film, you have to push more light through to expose those layers of film. So the older the film is, um, generally speaking, the higher the fog level. And the fog level can affect each individual color layer separately. Sometimes it only affects the, the top layer, but other times it affects all the layers individually and totally differently. So, um, so film can deteriorate differently and from different circumstances. So the question, of course, is how do you store film properly to prevent that? Well, refrigerating it is the best way to do it. Um, Kodak says 41 degrees is gonna be the optimal temperature to store your film for a long period of time. Some people freeze it and find really good results when they thaw it, and it takes a little bit of time to thaw it to make sure it doesn't get much moisture on the film, but they have good results with freezing. Um, but that's not why we're here. I only mention that because you need to be very careful about how you buy film and where you buy it from because of those things. So now, as we've talked about before, with Super 8, uh, most of the Super 8 cartridges are Kodachrome, and Kodachrome can't be processed in color anymore. So even if you were able to find a 20-year-old or 30-year-old stored properly Kodachrome cartridge, the likelihood that you're going to be able to get it to work and look good is pretty much zero. It's going to be processed as black and white nowadays, and it's most likely going to look really bad. So what does looking really bad look like? It's just going to have a lot of grain, a lot of noise. Um, so Kodachrome and Super 8 is not a good idea. Right, I would stay away from that. With 16 millimeter, right? So 16 millimeter, uh, you've got a lot of different options. And so, you know, new stock, right? So here, you know, brand new 16 millimeter stock, right? Will come in a box, it'll come in a can, okay? And generally speaking, if it's sealed like this, okay? It's a brand new roll of film, all right? Most people, when they open up rolls of film, the, the tape won't go on properly. You can usually tell it's been off before. Just pay attention to that. Um, but generally speaking, it's gonna be a new roll of film if it's sealed, okay? This box is sealed, this is sealed. So now the next question is, has it been stored properly? So you wanna ask the person you're getting the film from, hey, have you stored it properly? And again, 41 degrees, refrigerator's fine. Um, I would definitely ask, Always, always ask, because if you don't ask and it's been stored in somebody's bedroom at 75 degrees, it's probably not gonna be very good. It's basically gonna be trash. So ask about refrigeration. Um, the second thing to think about is, of course, that the newer stocks hold up better, right? This is Vision 3. Vision 3 is really only about 12 years old, really, about. So you know this roll of film is only, could max be 12 years old, where this roll of film, it says Eastman, uh, 7222 could be a lot older because they've had that stock out for a long time. So you want to go through and you want to do some research and figure out, you know, if it's Vision 1, uh, if it's Vision 2, um, oh, maybe it's this, you know, I've got, I got some Vision 2 100T, you know, so this is some really old stock. Um, it's probably close to 20 years old, actually. So you want to look it up. And it's easy to look it up. Wikipedia's got a great page that lists all the Kodak stocks and it lists the day they were manufactured and the date they were discontinued. So that's easy for you to know. You can know how long, how old the stock is. Um, I always tell people, look, you know, the Kodak logo changed on their stock in um, 2018. I think the logo changed in 2018, I believe. 
So this is the newer stock, this is the older stock. So you know right away, hey, if you look at a picture of the stock, this is what the newer stock, older stock looks like uh, on your left, and this is what the newer stock looks like on my right. So yeah, you can tell right away which new and what's old just by looking at this. This roll of film, no matter what, could only be four years old. This roll of film could be 12 years old. So that's something to think about too. Then there's a lot of variations. Like this is a recan of um, Fuji stock. Fuji cans are all square. Now Fuji just continued their stock in 2012. So you know that this roll of film's gotta be much older than 2012. So that's an automatic kind of red flag if you don't want to deal with any problems. Um, now there's something called recan as well. And I, I think we've talked about this in other videos, but Recan means that this roll of film had been shot and then the leftovers from the roll of film that weren't shot were put into a can, sealed up, and then labeled. So this is uh, 8672. Um, it's a Fuji stock and it's got 170 feet left in it and it's just a recan. And so um, that happens a lot. You know, you get a lot of recans, people trying to sell recans, and if, again, if they're not stored properly, in fact, Fuji recommends 50 degrees. Uh, if they're not stored properly, then you should probably stay away from it, right? It's basically the point of this video. If it's not stored properly, stay away from it. So let's just say you did buy a roll of film that wasn't so great, okay? Might not have been stored properly. What do you do with it? Well, what you can do is you can do a snip test. What that means is that you can send the roll of film off to a lab. They'll cut off 15 feet at the front of it, and they'll process it, and they'll tell you the fog layer. And depending on how far off the colors are from each other will depend on how good the roll of film is. Sometimes the fog layer is consistent where the uh, red, blue, and green channels are all the same amount of fog. And if that's the case, the roll of film's fine. You can shoot it. You want to overexpose a little bit, but you can definitely shoot it. A lot of labs will fail it because it'll be outside of their spec, but it's probably going to be okay for general purpose. And I shot a wonderful roll of Fuji film um, 64D um, Super F not long ago that was very old from 1998 and it had been frozen in a brick and I pulled out the brick of film, frozen film, and I shot one roll of it and it came out great. And the only reason why I didn't keep it is because the end of the film had some problems. And what happens with Fuji film is that the rim jet layer, which is the back black layer, uh, anti-hylation layer, um, wasn't coming off the film properly. And so as a consequence, it gave some speckles and I was very concerned about using that film and actually like for a real project and having it not come off. And so I sold it to somebody and I told them about the problems and they said, don't worry about it. They're, they're okay with losing that last 50 feet. I was really scared about that. With Kodak film, you don't have that problem. The Kodak Remjet seems to come off okay. Another thing to be worried about is physical damage to film. So sometimes film in a can might look fine, right? But it might not be. And you can tell film has been refrigerated because the can stickers kind of fall apart. They have like this weird look to them. The stickers look like they're, they've been melted a little bit and this tape is all kind of melted a little bit too and it doesn't really want to come off. That's actually a good sign. That means that the, the roll of film has been in the refrigerator. This one has a little bit of rust on it, so it's definitely been in the refrigerator uh, for a long time, which is great. That's good because the roll of film inside of it is good. So sometimes you buy a roll of film and you don't know. So what you got to do is you got to open it up in a changing bag, you know, in a dark room and you want to take a piece off of it. And what I normally do is I just take a little sliver off the film and I take it out and I wanna see if it does this. So this roll of film was heat treated. It was sitting in a, in a container in a truck at 200 degrees and it does this. Right? And I don't know if you can tell, but the emulsion is trash. But if you were to cut a piece off of this, and you were to look at it, right, and you were seeing no scratches, no emulsion problems, then you're probably gonna be okay with the emulsion as well. So that's another thing to really think about. You can actually test that in heating film. Film that's heated is not good. A lot of people don't store their film properly. Even their negatives, they don't store them properly. They store them in a hot place and you get them and it's trash. So be very, very careful about heat. That is another killer of film. Unfortunately, the only company still making film today is Kodak. And a lot of people try to sell you Fuji stock or Agfa stock or any other stock, and it's all really old, okay? So if anybody sells you other stock, remember it's very, very old and it's probably not very good, okay? I love Fuji, it's a great stock. I would shoot everything I had on Fuji, but you can't get it anymore. And the stuff that does exist is aging so fast and so rapidly that I wouldn't trust it. So today we only have Kodak. Now Kodak sells stock in many different flavors. 
Um, the biggest flavor of which is the thousand foot roll for 35 millimeter, okay? They have four negative stocks and they have a black and white negative. For 16 millimeter, they sell four and a foot spools. Again, the four, same four color negative stocks and they have two reversals, a, a black and white reversal and an ectochrome reversal on four and a foot um, cores, okay? And then they also make those same stocks on daylight spools as well. But, and this is a big but, Kodak does not make double perf stock, okay? They only make single perf stock today. You can special order double perf stock and sometimes they'll have a small limited batch run of double perf stock of 500T, but it's very, very rare they do it. They've only done it in the last year once and it goes very, very fast. So to get double perf stock for older cameras, you generally have to go on eBay and there's a couple companies selling it on eBay um, in daylight spool configuration, but they charge an arm and a leg for it, like double the price for normal. But if you have an old camera, you want to shoot one roll of film, whatever, right? And then of course, they also sell Super 8 cartridges. I believe they still make Tri-X, Ektachrome, and three color negative stocks for Super 8 cartridges. So that's basically the, the lowdown on buying film, okay? So one word of advice on short ends, because that's what a lot of people shoot, especially when it comes to 35 millimeter, is that the first five feet or so are probably throwaway. So just be very mindful about that. Just when you load them in your magazine, just go ahead and pull off some feet to make sure you get rid of any grease or dirt or anything that's left on that roll. Because what happens is that on those bigger shows where they're pulling and making recans uh, or, or short ends, um, they're not really caring about how dirty they are. They don't even care about the roll of film. They're gonna throw it away. So they're doing it really rushed and throwing it in the bag quickly and putting it in the can. So just be careful about them. They're fine, especially if it's newer stock, but at the same time, you don't know what you're getting. And that's another big problem, is that you could buy a bunch of recans or short ends and it's not what's in the can labeled properly and that's not good either. Now you can usually tell what stock is what if you have a sample of the right stock but other people don't. So, you know, you can cut a sample of new clean stock, and if you don't expose the light, you can cut a sample of your stock and you can compare the two of them and they, they will, should look exactly the same. And if they don't, then it's probably a different stock. And that's the problem. So you have to be very, very cautious about what you're buying online. So my buyer's advice is to buy from somebody who deals with film like I do, okay? Um, buy from someone who has short ends and recans on a regular basis, um, become friends with them. Um, maybe if they work on films, just say, hey, you know, the next time you work on a film, I'd love to get in and, and ha get some film from you. One of the great things about 35 millimeters, it's very easy to find short ends and recans. But with 16 millimeter, it's almost impossible to find. Sometimes, very, very, very infrequently, you can find them. Real Good might have them or another company like that. And so that's a real big thing to think about. Um, but don't think you're gonna get them. Don't wait and think you're gonna get them. It's much better to buy stock that's been refrigerated properly, it's sealed, it's ready to go. And then with 100 foot daylight spools, you know, as long as they're sealed, you're good to go, really. You know, this is an old roll of film. This is from Alpha Cine up in, in Washington. They're gone now. Um, but really truthfully, with 100 foot daylight spools, they should be so cheap, it shouldn't matter, right? You're not talking about a lot of money. Whereas in, you know, a four and a foot roll of film is almost 200 bucks after tax. So if you can save 50 or 60 bucks on an older roll of film, you can save 50 or 60 bucks. And then with Super 8, you know, a lot of guys are reloading Super 8 cartridges nowadays. You can go to Pro 8 and you can get any film you want into a Super 8 cartridge, you know, which is really great. They do a great job over there. They sell a bunch of really cool stocks that no one else has. And I really think if you're gonna be shooting Super 8, you really wanna deal with them because they're the experts of Super 8. And getting the right stock from them that they process is super important. They have great deals on buying a roll of film and then in that same price, you get the process and transfer or you just get process if it's ectochrome and, and you can take it home and project it. So definitely buy new with Super 8 because the format's narrow gauge and because you're dealing with such a limited amount of space and, and the fog layer, I just suggest buying new for Super 8. You know, don't even bother with older stock. I mean, it's fun to play with it and we're gonna do a video about shooting an ectochrome with older stock, but it's just a test, it's just for fun. It's not really a serious project. If you really care about what you're shooting, you wanna shoot on new stock. 
And then finally, before I leave this video, remember the most important thing, which is you need to process the roll of film immediately. And I know this is not talked about very much, but there's a huge dramatic difference in the amount of fog layer in the film if you process it later, which means that your grain is gonna be a lot higher. So shoot your roll of film and process it immediately, if not sooner. What I do and my general rule is that the day after my shoot, so if I shoot on a Sunday, that Sunday night I will go to Photochem and I'll drop it off because it'll be in the bath Monday morning. And when you do that, you will see an incredible increase in the quality of your film, lower noise floor, and it'll just come out much nicer. And if you sit on it for a long time, it's just gonna get faded and faded and faded, which means that when you scan it, you're gonna be bringing up more of that noise floor. And with 35 millimeters at the end of the world, with 16 millimeter and super eight, it's a problem, you know? Uh, I've sat on rolls of 35 millimeter for months and it's been okay, but not great. But with 16 millimeters, sit on it for a couple days and it really gets noisy fast. So process right away. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time.